Sleeping is an integral part of our life. Sleep is exquisite. Liberation from the ever so sickening burden of society, combined with the ability to slip into the fascinating realms of the human mind, all done so effortlessly. It's what I'd imagine heaven to be if it were real. The ability to just escape, constructing whatever you want, internally controlling all, where nobody else can do anything and you can do everything. A place where you can be alone. A place where... A place where you don't have to deal with the things that aren't worth your time. I was headed to spend time with two of my childhood acquaintances, Donovan and Jackson. They had known me since I was three years old. We've been practicing recurring get-togethers ever since I grasped what they could do for me. I'd realized as long as I spent time with them, they'd present themselves as my friend, which is excellent for my social status. With utmost sincerity, I don't feel the same way they feel about me. I don't relish investing my time with them, but as long as I spoil them with my presence, they grant me their cloak of disguise which is enough for me to stick around. There they are. They appear to be sitting in Jackson's car, conversing with one another. It came so naturally to people. That always amazed me. I have to break a smile to see more in touch with them in their conversation. People take cognizance in these sorts of things. It's best to mimic whatever emotion people are portraying. They're amused by this. I rarely listen to their words. I just do as they do. It's generally quite sad. Actually, for them. Not me. Yo, so we hitting the slopes tonight? Yeah, bro, I'm down. Yeah, I'm trying to hit the slopes. Yeah, uh, on that. Say that. Yo, Jackson. Yo. You speak Legondese? No, what's that? Legondese nuts. Are you fucking serious, <laughs> Donovan? I have never heard a joke so dull. Donovan's jokes are never laughable, so I'm not surprised. But that, that was atrocious. You can hardly call that a joke. The punchline was far from clever, and it lacked character development within the plot, which is a necessity for a sophisticated and successful joke. Yo, should I ask Riley out? The very notion of someone liking Jackson, enough to jeopardize their social status with the title of Jackson's girlfriend, is beyond me. If I could give him my genuine advice, it would be to spare her the embarrassment of rejecting him, and to do her the goodwill of never speaking to her again. Never speak to any girl again for that matter. Yeah, I think you should do it. His hair is always vaguely greasy, and his wardrobe consists of things only a 6th grader would wear. He keeps an unshaved and dirty look to his face, and he doesn't floss. Undoubtedly not the type of guy women will be flocking to. Neither of them were. If I cared even the slightest amount, maybe I would give them some tips. Alright, let's go. I appreciate fast food. It's cheap, and I enjoy how it tastes. I respect how they're direct with their food. They don't try to deceive you. They're truthful about how their food is cheaply made, and yet it's still satisfactory. I use the touchscreen in order to avoid speaking to the kid running the cash register. Upon ordering, I went and sat down at the finest table in the room. It provided a perspective of the whole restaurant and everyone in it. I observed my friends, who were still ordering. 
Donovan was ordering from the human and Jackson from the machine. What an intriguing contrast. On one hand, you have a flesh creature full of thoughts and feelings who routinely makes mistakes. And on the other hand, you have a machine full of motherboards and bolts, and yet it never messes up. How can such an imperfect creature be capable of creating something so quintessential? Eating with these two is never a pleasant experience. Donovan chews with his mouth open and slurps on his straw whenever he takes a drink. His style was moderately better than Jackson's, but it didn't make up for his imperfections. He tells jokes to deflect his flaws, but that won't delude me. I see right through him like I do everyone else. I see his sloppy eating habits and unkept eyebrows, his inferior manners and subpar jokes. I see it all and he doesn't even see it himself. I wonder what meets his eyes when he looks in the mirror. You're not better than us. What? You said this taco sucks. You almost done? Almost. I, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I tend to use the bathroom as an escape from reality. Half the time, I don't even have to go. I just let my mind wander to a world where people would appreciate me for what I am. Yet if I to see someone as sublime as yours truly, my bone structure is simply unmatched. It resembles the men you see in movies or in a catalog for men's fashion. My jawline is honed and my nose is the perfect wit. My hair is thick and flourishing. My skin is clear and unblemished. My eyes, piercingly beautiful. My phenomenal teeth. My ears, I was developing a sense of boredom. Normally I would observe my surroundings, but I've been doing that since the moment I stepped in here. Sometimes when I'm bored, I question if I'm the only one like myself, like if there are any others who I share a certain brilliance with. Truth be told, I hope there isn't, as that would only provide a way for my talents to go unnoticed. Even though I know such a task is far from achievable, the very concept of someone taking my place angers me. Actually, no. The word anger fails to exhibit my feelings on this topic. It fills me with rage. It maddens me with resentment and discontent. It makes my vision blurry and my thoughts go wild. I try to avoid getting this way in public, but recently it's grown worse. I need to get out of this establishment. Who is this? And who does he think he is? Sneaking in here while I'm in the bathroom like I wouldn't notice? His hair is full and thriving, but it isn't as thick as mine. It's actually a proven fact that blonde hair is less appealing to the female eye than my shade of brown. His jawline is sharp, but mine is slightly sharper, right? His eyebrows were understandably a threat to mine. You can tell he does them once a week or more. Sure, his eyes were tranquil and just the right bit of piercing, but they weren't blue like mine. He looks to be roughly 5'9 or 5'10, but those shoes surely add an inch. Look at him sitting up straight with his head held high like he's better than everyone around him. His style resembles something I might wear, which is saying a lot for him. He must be watching me and copying my clothing taste. Yeah, he's probably obsessed with me. His skin is quite smooth, I have to admit. I'd love to know what type of moisturizer he uses. Who does he think he is though? I mean seriously. Yeah, who is that kid? Oh, that's Terrence. Terrence Douglas. He's in the grade above us. Terrence Douglas? What is he, an 18th century poet? What kind of name is Terrence Douglas? And why must he come in here now when I'm here? I was here first. That smug bastard. Terrence Douglas. Terrence Douglas. He knows what he's doing. This little game he's playing. He's just sitting there, perched up, pretending to enjoy his meal, when really he's there to challenge me, flaunting his good looks and style on me as if I'm less than him. I won't submit that easily. He'll have to try harder than that. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, but... Something about this isn't sitting right with me. I was starting to feel sick to my stomach. I 
I wonder which car out here is Terrence Douglas's. Does he drive? I bet he drives one of those old Toyotas. One with a fading paint job and pieces falling off. However, he still drives it, as it's great on gas and overall a reliable car. I wonder what side of town Terrence Douglas lives on. I bet he lives in one of those medium-sized houses on Warren Drive, a white one, with pillars and a sign above the door that says Live, Laugh, Love. I wonder if he has any siblings. I bet he has a little sister named Morgan. No, Angela. Yeah, Angela. I bet he gives her rides to school every day. I wonder what his relationship is like with his parents. I bet they're not too strict. Emotions are fascinating, neural impulses that move you to action, adapted from our primal days as a tool of survival. Though I believe emotions are for the weak-minded, it's clear to me that as a human being, they're unavoidable. With that, I drew the conclusion that I must find a way to manage. There can be no others like myself. It doesn't work, as much as I wish it could. One day, the world will understand why, and they will see the way I do and in due time, my well-deserved appreciation and love will be rewarded upon me. Until then, I have to stay quiet and let what's going to happen, happen. Since unfortunately, as a creature with primal instincts, this outcome is simply unavoidable. Truly, my actions are necessary, and though they may seem rash to an uneducated eye, I insist to myself the urgency of the matter. I insist that action must be taken and I insist it's the only way to protect my image.